Great. I got a thumbs up. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome back to our friends that are streaming live. I'm Santana. I'm the MC Master of Ceremonies for track one this morning at WordCamp Lisboa 2023. We've got a great talk coming up from my dear friend Cheryl Sood. Uh, she's a former pharmacist, if you can believe that or not, turned super successful entrepreneur um, and social media influencer. Her social media presence um, has captured the attention of hundreds of thousands of folks. And so her talk today on how to create social media content that is engaging and drives impact for you, uh, I think will be applicable for so many of us in this room. So I want to give a big warm welcome from WordCamp Lishboa to Cheryl Sood. Cheryl, take the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Santana. Can you guys all hear me okay? All right, and let's just make sure I know how to use this. All right, we're good to go. So thank you again, Santana, for the introduction, and thank you to all of you for coming to my talk this morning. As Santana mentioned, I am so excited to share with you all things social media content creation. As she mentioned, I am a, if you look at by you know, by profession, I'm a former pharmacist, but realized early on that my passion was in entrepreneurship. And so a few years ago, I decided to leave my profession of pharmacy and go all in in entrepreneurship. And it definitely helped that my husband is a serial entrepreneur. So I knew kind of, I had an idea of where to start, where to look, how to kind of self-teach myself um, about everything I need to learn. And as I started learning about all the different facets that come along with entrepreneurship, I realized that my calling was in brand management, social media content creation, because I really loved connecting with people, um, engaging with people, creating content that, um, that resonated with them, and through trial and error, taking some courses, watching some YouTube videos, I basically learned tips and strategies that I hope to share with you all this morning on how to create compelling social media content. So most of the examples that I'll give you throughout my talk today are going to be examples that we used in growing our own brands. My husband and I have our own several companies, so talking about how we um, created social media content for those brands to stand out from competitors but also talk about what I learned through my own personal sort of journey of creating a TikTok account, um, my own personal Instagram account of like how I learned to resonate with people and create content that was compelling. So, <clears throat> so let's first go over what I plan to cover today um, so you know what to expect from my talk. So in this morning's talk, we'll delve into the art of creating um, captivating social media content that resonates with your audience and boosts engagement. We'll explore key elements that make content compelling, such as understanding your audience, leveraging storytelling, creating visually appealing posts, ensuring relevance, and maximizing reach. Additionally, we'll discuss AI-powered tools. For those of you that were here for Dave's talk this morning, he talked a lot about how AI is revolutionizing so many different spaces, and social media content creation is definitely one of them, um, in terms of like how you can streamline your content creation, saving you time and effort. And by the end of the talk, you'll walk away with practical tips, strategies, and tools to enhance your social media content and forge stronger connections with your audience. So whether you're a small business owner, you're a marketer, a social media manager, this presentation I really hope will give you valuable insights to help you create more effective and engaging content. So we have to talk about this device right here. You know, 15 years ago, device came, this device came, this little handheld device has become the ultimate gateway, connecting billions of people across the globe and has completely revolutionized how businesses engage with their audience. It's connected, like I said, connected billions of people worldwide, revolutionizing how businesses engage with their audience. Social media apps are now at our fingertips. And because of that, brands now have unprecedented access to their customers in real time. So platforms like Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, businesses have never had a moment like we do right now to showcase their products, share their stories, 
build meaningful connections. And the impact of these smartphones goes beyond connectivity through, um, it, it goes beyond connectivity. They have, trans they have also transformed consumer behavior, shaping how we discover, how we research, how we make purchasing, de how we make pur purchasing decisions. And with AI now, things have transformed on a whole other level with personalized marketing approaches. So with this ever-changing landscape and different platforms, and now with AI becoming more and more mainstream, small brands, big brands, medium-sized brands, no matter what kind of product or service you're selling, we all need to be adapting our strategies constantly. And knowing how to stand out from the rest and understanding, this is really important, because even Dave mentioned this with the AI, understanding the psychology of human behavior, because at the end of the day, that human connection understanding what that real person is looking for, whether it's a chatbot from AI or a direct message from an actual human, it's important for brands to understand all of this so that they can differentiate from everyone else. Communication with your audience is also instrumental for success because social media provides that two-way um, interaction, fostering immediate, um, immediate connection. So the key ingredient in creating content that is, the, the key ingredient in creating content is creating content that is compelling. So what is compelling? The definition of compelling is evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. Powerfully irresistible. Very powerful words. And this is really how you stand out. So compelling content can capture the attention of your audience and keep them engaged, which then increases the likelihood that they will remember your message and take action, right? Because you have to, obviously, we all know that when people are scrolling, when people are on the various different platforms, they may not be in the market of your product or service at that time, but you need to make sure that your content is compelling enough that they remember you at the moment they want to make that purchase. Oh yeah, I remember that company that sells those eco-friendly plates. I remember that company that helps people to move to Portugal. I want to go back to their page and you know, kind of find out what services they offer. Compelling content can capture, um, well, compelling content can also build trust and credibility with your audience, and it establishes your brand as a thought leader in your particular industry or niche. It can help establish a brand's voice, um, their, the brand's personality, the brand's values, making it easier to connect with your target audience. So these are really important in terms of relating with your audience and differentiated in what is definitely a very saturated market. So this, this statistic, 54% um, of social media users say they browse social media when they're looking for ideas, inspiration, or to research products or services. It highlights the importance of creating compelling content that provides value and meets the needs of your audience, whether they're seeking information, looking for something to buy, browsing for entertainment, or just looking for inspiration. So by understanding your audience's motivations and interests and simultaneously understanding why people use one platform for inspiration, like Pinterest, for example, or another one for buying, Instagram, Facebook ads, you can create personalized content that resonates with them and drives engagement, loyalty, and ultimately business success. So for example, in the multi-million dollar brand that I manage the social media accounts for, we, were, we had platforms across all of them. We used Pinterest to give people inspiration on how to use our products. So it was mostly about just really pretty imagery. It wasn't focused on selling. We actually didn't even do an ad campaign on Pinterest, but gathered enough um, of a community on Pinterest to give that inspiration of how to use our products by creating beautiful photos and imagery. And we created that community on, on Pinterest that people felt drawn to. We use Instagram for brand credibility and social proof by using what's called UGC, or user-generated content, and I'll talk a lot about that because that was something that really kind of propelled our brand again, um, compared to other, to other competitors in our market. And um, one second. 
but yeah, we use Instagram for that. We used um, Twitter and LinkedIn to drive SEO engagement to our blog posts on our website. So as you can see, you kind of have, you just have to understand all the different platforms that are out there and be sure to leverage them appropriately so that you can bring the right audience to your, um, to your brand. So compelling content, just in summary, it's a powerful tool, captures intention, builds trust, and drives engagement. To achieve this, your content needs to strike a delicate balance. It needs to be relatable to your audience's experience while standing out from the vast sea of information that's available. And by offering unique value and addressing your audience's needs and desires, you can create content that resonates deeply, establishes trust, and captures their attention in an increasingly crowded digital landscape. So understanding your audience. This is probably one of the most important things for marketers, brand managers, social media managers to understand their audience. It allows you to tailor your content, speak their language, know their wants and desires, and address their needs directly. By creating personalized experiences, you can then foster a deeper connection and enhance engagement. Additionally, audience insights can help you create content that captures attention and drives results. Preci precise targeting tools enable you to reach the right people and optimize your ad spend if you choose to do so. And ultimately, understanding your audience builds trust, loyalty, and long-term relationships, which is so, so important in managing social media brands. Um, Questions to ask to identify your target at to, to, to identify your target audience, if, because how do you figure out who those people are? Are you trying to reach a certain region, or are you a global brand? What age is your your ideal customer? What platforms are they usually on? This is how you determine where you're going to spend your time and energy on the various platforms that are out there. Um, if you're like a local a local company that provides a local service, maybe TikTok may not be the the one for you because that's more of like a global reach. Um, maybe you want to focus on Facebook ads and things like that. So you really want to make sure that you are identifying your target audience, analyzing your existing customer base to understand their interests and behaviors. You can conduct surveys, polls on social media. You know, there's a lot of those Q&A polls, um, question polls that you can gather direct insights from your audience to see what it is that they're looking for. So the process of understanding your audience is ongoing. You have to really just look at the market research, gain a deeper understanding, and require and it requires regular review and analysis to refine your understanding of, of, of the audience that you're targeting. So user-generated content, I mentioned this before. So this using user-generated content is what helped propel my brand social media presence to the top and really stand out from other competitors. And so the use of UGC, it really taps into fundamental aspects of human psychology. It provides social proof by showcasing real customers, building trust and credibility. Human beings, we have an inherent tendency to look to others for guidance and validation. UGC provides social proof as it showcases real customers using and enjoying a brand's products or services. So when we see people posting our, our product in a dinner party that they're hosting or making a beautiful charcuterie tray um, you know, and using our sustainable dinnerware for that, we basically can then reach out to them through Instagram and say, we really love what you did here. Can we share it to our page? And by doing that, you create this sort of um, brand loyalty, brand cred cred credibility. These people love to be seen. They love that we recognize their work. Um, and seeing others engage with the brand builds trust and credibility, influencing our perception that, the brand, that our brand is reliable and worth engaging with. It also satisfies, UGC satisfies our need for identity and belonging, allowing individuals to express themselves and become part of a community centered around the brand. It, invo it evokes emotional engagement. People like seeing other people comment on their work, um, and ultimately, as the brand, you save a lot of time and energy in creating, in creating your own content because you're leveraging other people's content to support their brand. So you tag them, you sh give them a shout out, you thank them for using their product, and it just kind of causes this ripple effect of people 
liking that and enjoying that as well. Um, storytelling and visual appeal, also very important. You guys probably for yourself, and when you guys are scrolling on social media apps, you may be more drawn to a page that just has a very um, complete, concise sort of storytelling aesthetic, a visual appeal, something that is consistent, something where you go to that page and you're like, I know what this brand does and I know what they offer. This is super important in um, capturing attention, building emotional connections, and conveying brand messages. Not e like, and then, like I mentioned before, not every customer may be in the market for your product at the time that they see your post or they see your page. But if you spend time on the storytelling piece, creating your brand story, having a visually aesthetic feed where they can see exactly what it is that you offer, something that is you know, just very consistent, they'll, they'll have more chance of remembering um, your brand when it comes time to making that purchase. So this, this storytelling visual appeal is definitely a way to stand out from your competitors and just have that spot um, in your consumer, in that buyer's mind share. Um, much like storytelling and visual appeal, your brand's relevance and reach are also key factors in creating compelling social media content because they determine the size and engagement of your audience. So I would have a bi-weekly check-in with my content creation team and we would review metrics, we would review the analytics, we see which posts are working, which are not, the new tools that were in place, because like I mentioned, the landscape is changing and now with AI in place, like how can we use certain AI tools to help you know, be more efficient and so forth. And so if you're not evolving with what is happening or constantly improving, competitors will definitely sneak up past you very quickly. And the second paragraph talks about diversification, which I've also mentioned about. It's super important to be able to understand where you're gonna spend your energy on the various platforms. I think I just heard that Meta is now coming out with a Twitter competitor where they're gonna be able to have long form text writing that people can engage with. Twitter obviously now is doing, they're gonna have a podcasting site and they're gonna do long term videos. So all these, platforms are all competing with one, one another and they're all going to try and include some of the things that they know people are looking for. So it's really important to keep up to speed on all that and see what makes the most sense for your brand. Because not every brand obviously has a use for all the different social, me social media platforms that are out there. Um, another stat, 91% of businesses use three or more um, social media platforms for their marketing efforts. And then um, in summary for understanding your audience, so you know, understand their interests, their preferences. Secondly, leverage the UGC content to tap into the creativity of your audience and showcase authentic experiences. And next, prioritize relevance and reach by strategically distributing your content across multiple platforms. And harness the power of storytelling to emotionally connect with your audience and visually inspire them. So I wanna end the last two minutes of my talk. I, you know, it's just really to kind of, for those of you again who are here for the first talk this morning, AI is, is changing the game big time. I mean, not only in content media creation, but in chatbots, in optimization, and so forth. And so th this could be a talk in itself, as you saw this morning. And even when it comes to social media, there's just so much involved. By the, the time that I was making these slides, there has been so many more tools and so many more ways to kind of optimize social media um, content creation, but the amount of time that people are going to save and simultaneously explode the local, the local or global businesses is definitely going to be profound. It's going to change a lot in terms of how people are going to use this. So like I mentioned, even in social media content creation, you know, if you're a social media marketer, you're a content creator, you're an analytics expert, you're an advertiser, and AI can help with all of these. You're a customer service representative. And so there's so many different tools. I just put a couple here, but it's already changing. These are already outdated because there's so many new ones coming up every day. So 
even creating the right captions, knowing the right keywords, knowing the right, you know, depending on the platform that you use. There is um, a lot. ChatGPT is honestly old news because there's so many more um, specialized AI tools that are out there that can help social media um, marketers create the content that they need. Um, and, you know, just again to summarize, like these are the things that AI will revolutionize this space. So saving time, personalization, consistent, that's more about the marketing, consistency, optimization, and creativity. But the things about storytelling, that emotional appeal, those are the things that are going to remain, right? So that's, that's where even though AI may replace some of these things, understanding that human psychology of what it is that people are looking for and even directing the chatbots and all these things to make it seem like it's this human person that's connecting with you is going to be super important. Gary Vaynerchuk, may, maybe some of you know him, he is probably one of my favorite social media wizards um, and one of his famous quotes is, social media is not a media, the key is to listen engage and build relationships. It's not a one-way street. So social media, the reason why it's called social is because it's about that two-way interaction. And that's what people are looking for on these apps. They want to build a relationship that you need to listen, engage. It, um, it's a tool for building connections, relationships with people rather than simply broadcasting a message to a passive audience. It highlights the need for businesses to actively listen and build authentic relationships based on trust and creating value. It is absolutely important to make sure that you understand your audience's need, their pain points, their interest, and create focus on providing value. Thank you so much. Um, share, that's, my, that's me. These are all of my um, social handles, so Twitter first, TikTok, and Instagram. And I'm happy to take any questions. Well, first of all, thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Um, I think you gave us so much uh, to think about, so I want to thank you. We will open it up to questions. I'm going to bring you out here a little bit um, for the q and I'll kick us off, but if anyone is percolating, you have a question you want to ask, I assume you do, yes? Uh, our friends in the yellow shirts will go, oh, we got a lot of questions, so maybe I, I'll save my question for a later time and date. Uh, let's take this gentleman in the stripes. Thank you. Yeah, great talk. Thank you for all that. Um, my question is about staying authentic. Um, I, I, I think there's a balance to be struck between getting the brand out there and also creating content that's engaging. Have you got any advice on monetizing, getting brand awareness and affiliations and things like that whilst creating good content that people want to stay engaged with? Yeah, I'll give examples for what we did with some of our brand, from some, for some of our company brands. So we weren't the only brand that was selling the product that we, we sell. And so what we looked at is what were other brands doing? How were they, um, how were they kind of showing this authenticity? And it came as simple as like the way that we even posted about the members of our community, the way we even engaged with DMs that we would receive. It was, you know, welcoming in, it's, it's not our fault, you know, even something as simple as we don't refer to, you know, the 50,000 people that are on the Instagram as our followers. We refer to them as our community. So things like that where you're just really kind of shaping into or, or thinking about the human sort of psychology of like, we're real people behind this brand and you can see us, here's how we do, here's how we make our product, here's, you know, here, here are the people behind it and here's you, here's the community that use it. I think those simple things can kind of keep that authenticity there rather than, you know, just kind of posting and trying to feel like you're constantly selling because I think humans also don't like to be bombarded with that either. So it's more about like finding that right balance of, you know, being, being the human behind the brand, especially if that's important for the type of product that you're selling. That's a wonderful question. Thank you for that question. I, I think we got one over here in a white shirt. Looks white. The lights really distort your beautiful Hi, colors. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was wondering if you have any insights on the difference between products and services when it comes to social media, how to position them. That's a good question. Um, so I, I actually, when I first moved to Lisbon three years ago, I started a TikTok account 
that gained a pretty big following right away, talking about the cultural differences between an American and American living in Portugal. And when I saw that increase in uh, followers, I was like, okay, how do I, how do I leverage? How can, what kind of service can I provide? What kind of service can I now, you know, do to like help people either move or like help them answer questions, do consulting calls. It's a very different, it, you, you bring up a great question because it's very different. I ended up not moving in that direction for own personal reasons. So I can't give you specific examples of like how that worked. I ended up moving towards the direction of building our own brands and building a brand, building a product versus a service definitely very different because as a service, you also kind of have to sell yourself. With the product, you're selling the product and the use case of the product. And so with, with the service, there's a lot more that goes involved, a lot more time obviously that goes involved because you are that person behind that service. You need to have obviously a website, you need to have you know, things like that. Not, not that you don't with a product, but it's just a little bit of a different sort of um, thing. So I don't have personal experience of how to compare the two, but I would say selling a product is just a little bit easier, but that's biased because that's what I've been doing, so. Mm -hmm. Do we have, we have time for one more question. We got this, this fella here. I still think it's green. It still really looks green. <laughs> oh, it's a different guy. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> How lovely to meet you, this gentleman in the green. <laughs> but the other one was also blue. It's blue! <laughs> okay, it's time to get my eye exam. Thank you. Your question, sir. Um, thank you. Uh, so, uh, in terms of with uh, user-generated content, and even uh, uh, quite a follow-up of the question, the difference between products and services, um, any tips, ideas on how to use user-generated content for services, especially when we have a really low following or we are just starting on social media? Yeah, I do, because even for our brand, we, that, you, using UGC, we started when we had 200 people following our brand. And so it, the tip is really, again, it goes back into that authenticity and really being able to share your story. So, so the, one of the brands that we did, and I can't share the name because we're in the middle of an acquisition right now, but one of the brands was a brand that a lot of people would use used to create charcuterie boards. So for those that aren't familiar with charcuterie boards, they're a collection of meat and cheese and fruit and vegetables displayed beautifully on a tray or a plate. And so we basically, we knew that that was gonna be a huge community, especially in the States during the pandemic, that whole thing just skyrocketed, that, that area. And so we started reaching out to charcuterie influencers, if you, if you will, that had a larger following and said, hey, we really love your content. We have these sustainable trays that we think would be excellent for your charcuterie. We'd love to send you some if you can create some charcuterie and then in return we can use them on our site. So something as simple as that, and we didn't have a lot of followers at that time that we started reaching out to them, but we knew the importance of building a community by using user-generated content from early on. So that it, it's really just about reaching out to them um, and getting their buy-in. Okay, thank you. I was uh, more on the services part, yeah. I, um, which I think it's harder to get user-generated content, especially if we are a consultant or a coach or we don't have something that is more visual. I uh, agree, I agree. It is, it, it, do, it is a little bit more challenging with, with the service-based um, businesses. I don't have any tips. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that wonderful question. I think next up we have our first coffee hour, is that right? So, uh, no, 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 not so fast, my friends. What are you doing? First we have to present Cheryl with our lovely gift. Please give Cheryl another round of applause and thank her for her wonderful contribution. Thank you so much, I hope you enjoy this gift. <laughs> 